Hello guys, good day to you. Welcome to this new video. Andrew from Mill Head Games here. This month, Godot published a video show reel about games that are made with Godot, and I thought it would be a good idea to actually talk about these games and why not try them. Now, the fact is that not all of them have demos out, and I had the occasion to try just around 10 of them. And today, we're going to see some gameplay of those games and why these games are great and why you should watch over them. Obviously, there are a few of them that are on my favorites now because I'm watching forward for those projects because I really love what these creators are making with their projects. Without further ado, let's jump and let's see the first game. Before we even start, this is a little disclaimer. These games are not rated. This video is not a top 10, so it's just the way I play the games. And I'm going to talk about them in that way. The first game that I played was Lumencraft. Desperate, unnumbered and with gun turrets as your only companion. Lumencraft is a top-down shooter with base building elements. And what would you like more? Well, there's a lot more on Lumencraft. Your main objective is obviously to survive, and your main companion is a drill. And drilling is going to be a main fact here. Yes, because you need minerals and lumens to craft new stuff, and you're going to craft a lot of stuff, and you're going to make upgrades of your weapons and your drill as well. There is a strong component about being a tower defense game, because you build walls, you build turrets to protect yourself from these bad and scary evil creatures in the dark. With the demo comes one map that you can play, just go and download it and it's going to introduce you to the game. Now one thing that I really liked and enjoyed is actually the shader work here because the guys made very nice use of the shaders and the menus, I love the menus. The menus are very good. I mean, most of the devs don't realize how important is actually the UE, the inventory, all the interface that the player is going to interact with. The second game that I played is The Ballad of Bonky. Pinball-like fighting meets claymation in this bouncy arcade adventure. Help Bonky and Poncho take down evil bots, cryptids and lizard overlords to unreal the conspiracy, alone or with a friend. The aesthetic of this game is just awesome. I really enjoy enjoyed playing it and I really enjoyed all the clay look. The animation itself looks like a stop motion made and the whole game looks like a film made in stop motion actually. The gameplay is fun, the dialogues are fun and the music is just lovely. The game made me remember my childhood and made me feel like a child playing with a video game actually. I really enjoyed all the feelings and I can't wait to play the full game. The third game that I played is First of the Forgotten. First of the Forgotten is a platformer set in a harsh dark world, but that doesn't mean that you're helpless. Relics passed down from your family allow you to interact with forgotten technology and fight your way forward. So jump, punch, slide and swing through the remains of civilization facing powerful bosses to unlock new movement and combat abilities for your giant mechanical fish as you seek out the remains of humankind. It is a 2.5D game and there are obviously 3D assets here. The gameplay feels smooth and jumping feels just good and right. I think that most of you would like this game since it has a look like Limbo. Sadly this doesn't meet my taste because I like color in games. But I have to be honest, game is very well made and definitely needs your support, so please go and support the dev and you can find him making this on live streams as well. The fourth game that I played is Quetzal. Embark on a mystical journey on Quetzal, a fast-paced precision platform where you use obstacles to your advantage. You'll discover a mystical underground world, defeat blood revenues, stone creatures and survive torturous obstacles in your quest for answers and meaning. I had some fun playing Quetzal. It has very interesting and nice mechanics. I didn't really enjoy the combination of keys for the controls actually because it was kinda hard for me to actually, you know, play the game because precision here is everything. Everything. You have double jumps, you can use obstacles to jump even higher, and you can combine more mechanics to actually reach other points of the map. Quizzle uses environmental obstacles that are quite familiar in platformer games, and you will feel familiar on playing the game, and you'll die a lot of times. At least I died a lot of times. The number five game that I played is Demise Sanctuary. Fight hordes of otherworldly monsters and explore procedurally generated dungeons. In this 
this addicted twin stick action roguelike with beautiful pixel art. And believe me, pixel art here is beautiful. I really like the character design here and all the lighting effects. The game obviously combines shaders and animations and the look of the effects looks like made by professionals. The gameplay itself is interesting. You enter a room, you have to clear it from all the monsters and then you can move to the next room. The gameplay experience actually is different each time because like the description says, every room here is procedurally generated so each time you have a different situation and environment. There are different power-ups that you unlock in each room and in order to acquire those you have to actually pay for them. If you like the genre please give a look to this game, support the game, you're going to have fun, believe me. The next game that I played, the seventh one, is Dash Pong. Dash Pong is a fun and fast-paced arcade local multiplayer game. You create physics-based pedals by dashing. Score goes by sending your pedals at full speed. Enjoy the game up to four players in local multiplayer or with the Steam remote play together. The fact here is that I played Dash Pong but I didn't have the full experience actually because I was playing it alone. I didn't have anyone to play it with but definitely I can tell you how it looks and how it feels actually to play it. The mechanics here are very interesting and you can find creative ways to use the dash and all your pedals. The game has different environments offering a huge variety on the gameplay and the gameplay can easily be chaotic. You can think to this like a party game and playing it with friends will be definitely enjoyable and a lot of fun. The eighth game that I played is Protocorgy. Get ready to bark him up. Play as Bullet, a C3 class cute cybernetic Corgi. Pop on his quest to save his owner, a brilliant scientist kidnapped by an alien race that wants to rule the galaxy. Protocorgy is a retro pixel art shoot em up with a strong arcade feel. And guys, I love the game. The pixel art is just awesome. The game is so lovely and enjoyable. And you can see the love that the devs are putting on this project. Project from the starting. The intro is just awesome. I love the music with this, you know, Japanese vibe and old retro anime and game vibes. I'm making a shoot em up by myself and definitely I can learn a lot from watching this game. And if you want to learn something, please give a look to this game. The game is fun. The menus are so well made. The gameplay itself feels so good. You play in the shoes of this Corgi and you bark to actually shoot and it's so funny. And there are tons of power-ups. You grab them and everything changes. I enjoyed every single moment on playing this game. But believe me, the game is hard. But you can change the difficulty if you want. And if you look to the animations in pixel art, they look so cool. All the character design of the aliens and the enemies bring you back to the retro era. Please go and support the game. It really deserves and definitely it's on my wish list which listed and give the devs some support the next game that I played, the 8th one, is Cardbob Revival. Go on dungeon runs in this 3D action hack and slash roguelike in a sci-fi cardboard world. Fight, collect, upgrade, die, <laughs> shopkeep and haggle for the best price. Grow stronger and try again. You already know but there aren't a lot of 3D games on Godot Engine. Cardbob Revival is a 3D game and it nails the hack and slash genre. I love the character design and the gameplay itself. You have a sword or a saber and you can fight like a Jedi basically and you can launch it as well. Sadly I didn't explore that much the shopping thing but definitely give this a look and try this game. You're going to find it very interesting and you're going to have fun and I really enjoy the skill tree because you kind of upgrade your status and that was fun actually. Give the devs some support and wishlist the game and why not play the demo. The ninth game that I played is Rota. Rota is a gravity bending puzzle platforming adventure. Walk over the edge to rotate your gravity. Push, pull and rotate gravity blocks to traverse the stage and solve puzzles. Collect all 50 gems and explore 8 vibrant worlds. I love the puzzles. Rota is so relaxing and the colors of the game are so vibrant and I really enjoyed them. The thing here is that I would like to play this game on my mobile phone because this kind of puzzle games or casual games, I really enjoy them on my mobile phone. You know, I like being on my coach and playing video games on the phone and Rota definitely will be one of those games that I would like to play. The puzzles are never too frustrating so that's a huge thing and I really enjoyed all the sounds and music because if you are playing with headphones surround you from everywhere. I love that. 
the game is out, you can play it, you can buy it, and you can download the demo, so please go and support this game. It really deserves your attention. The tenth game that I played is Project Cat Paper Lily Prologue. Project Cat is a short and conventional RPG horror game in which there is always another way. Solve puzzles, make friends or not, and guide Cat as she attempts to uncover the mystery behind a strange golden letter. For that much that I play the game, I would say that this is more on the visual novel genre. There is a lot of dialogues and definitely the story here is the real protagonist. The game itself, the gameplay, looks a lot like an RPG maker game and obviously is made in pixel. Art. I really enjoyed all the plot and the music, but you really need to like this kind of games because there's a lot of dialogue and you need to read it. The characters are drawn in an anime style, so when they are speaking basically you're going to see this anime style character and they're going to assume different expressions on the face actually. And I found it very interesting and very nice. This doesn't happen always, but it is really appreciated in visual novels actually. The story itself sadly didn't grab my attention, but you know, it's it's my taste and doesn't mean that this is your taste as well. So please give a look to the game, it's free, it's available and please support the devs. And last but not least, I played The Legend of Lumina. Explore an ancient forest, push blocks to solve puzzles, and search for a way to end the course of your land. This game is made in pixel art and I really like the pixel art and I really enjoyed solving the puzzles. Some of those are actually quite difficult and at a point I really felt blocked. I didn't know anymore what to do actually. <laughs> but I really liked all the gameplay in general. An interesting thing is that the dev actually added a joystick, so probably this game is going to be ported on Android as well, and I really would like to see this game on Android. And if you make mistakes in the game, you can undo movements. And this isn't so common on the games. Moving forward on the game, you'll acquire some new skills that will allow you to solve new puzzles. The game is free, is out, you can find it on Niche. Please go and support the game, support the dev. You can even even play it on a browser so you don't really have excuses for this. Okay guys, this, this is the end of the video, hopefully you liked and you enjoyed it. If so, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below what are your favorite ones and which are the games that you're going to support actually to buy because, you know, supporting games means that you are going to buy them as well because, you know, this devs needs money to, to keep <laughs> to keep things up. And don't forget to turn on the bell notification to not lose any of my further videos in the future. And more important, keep devving games!